what is good we're back got another roster review for your pleasure uh we got old clyde frog over here on the uh patrols he's got a little bit of an issue here he said he's he's got the one three the one nine the one twelve this year he won the chip in 2021 and he finally tore it down last year so he wants some ideas of where to go and what to do so the roster here we got a 12-man dynasty three wide receiver super flex half point ppr at least it's not no point ppr yeah um he's got kyler murray will levis kenny pickett desmond ritter jarrett stidham so one quarterback startable and will some levis question marks. Mm-hmm. and kenny pickett so some two question marks levis and pickett stidham and ritter are gone yeah, I mean, you could probably drop Stidham. Ritter might have... I told you to trade. I told around. you to get whatever you could get for Ritter <laughs> last year. I told you so. Uh, Drake London, Debo, Jaden Reed, Marquise Brown, Brandon Cooks, Gabe Davis, Demario Douglas, Jonathan Mingo, Xavier Gibson, and A.T. Perry. So these are deeper... It seems like a deeper roster right there with, with those guys on there. Um, you know, pretty pretty decent wide receiving core there. Uh, David Montgomery, Roshan Johnson, Kendra Miller, Keaton Mitchell, Evan Hull... Um, I don't. How do you pronounce that guy's name? Mari Demarcado. Sure. Uh, Cardinals running back. Uh, Emmanuel Wilson and Donta Foreman, and then we got Michael Mayer, Chigakonkwo, Jelani Woods, Davis Allen, and D Washington. He's got one three, one nine, one twelve, a second, a third, a fourth. Uh, and then doesn't look like twenty five. He has no first, but a second and two thirds. So. Yeah, kind of struggling right now, big Clyde Frog. Um, you got a couple of names here, but you uh, and you got some good th- one three will be a super stud, and nine and twelve will be fun. I got an idea what to do with those picks, but you uh, you kind of struggling a little bit here, but yeah. So I you're mean, gonna need a, you're gonna need a Kyler Murray bounce back because you need that equity pop right there off of Kyler Murray for sure. You need you need to be able. Unfortunately, Debo did nothing wrong this year, but just stocks going down. For you know, like he was great this year. <laughs> yeah, just outstanding. But uh, nobody you know. wants to trade you for Debo. But when he's in your, but he's an amazing fantasy point scorer and wide receiver. Right. So I don't think you're going to be able to do very much with Debo. There might be a guy in your league who says, "Hey, I really like Debo. If you can find him." Um, but he might be an in-season deal when like you're like mm-hmm. well, is Debo's still scoring points you want these points or not exactly uh, he's crushing you know he's crushing uh, on the offseason people are gonna be like he's a running back who plays wide receiver and he's 27 or 28 so I don't want him that being said I mean I mean I'm a I'm a Gamecock right I, the the most fun that I had watching a clip of a press conference this year outside of anything that Dan Campbell said because I'm a Lions fan was the one leading up to last week or two weeks ago um when they were t- somebody asked Debo Samuel about protecting his body did you see that clip Mm-mm. they you know how reporters are you know Debo how do you how do you figure out what's your game plan or what's your mindset going into the game because the way you play you play so physical but you need to be protecting yourself Debo goes I ain't protecting nothing <laughs> yeah and then didn't say nothing just this the coldest <laughs> I ain't protecting nothing yeah you know just a just the most football player response all right you know you got your shoulder debo you play so tough you play like a running back how do you what you i ain't protecting nothing no, i'm good i mean you <clears throat> how do you not love this guy that so you got to trade him <laughs> before he plays anymore obviously the super bowl is coming up and you can only we can i'm hoping the niners will probably hear this after the super bowl no doubt so hopefully he's got a ring hopefully he's won the super bowl and he came out healthy my goal would be to trade Debo off of this team, if you were anywhere close to winning, I, I wouldn't be having this conversation with you. Mm-hmm. You're not close to winning with this team. Good. I'm glad you won the championship in 2021 and got paid. And now you're going to have an, you're going to enjoy this process. I hope let's enjoy it together, but you should probably like Casey, you, you should probably try to find the, you don't want to be like pushing Debo on people. Mm-hmm. He, you need to be like throwing packages out to everybody and seeing if anybody's responses uh come back you know with debo in it you need to find the debo guy without telling everybody you're trying to unload debo Mm -hmm. you know because debo's debo debo's one of your basically your best player on your team him and kyler you know i mean drake london's got value but like your week-to-week point score nobody on your team is as good as debo so 
you could either a trade him before he plays again next year and gets hurt because that's the way he plays he ain't protecting nothing or you gamble and you get in three weeks in the season he's averaging toward averaging 20 points a game yeah and you trade him before he plays week four because he might you know he's a walking time bomb dude yeah because he plays like he's you know a freaking linebacker oh sure yeah, I mean, so it might might be a little difficult to get full value for him, but he's the glowing red object of sell here, obviously. Right. Great um, point. You're not going to get full value, it's, and I'm, you need to massage the trade partners to not get a minimal value, but you basically have to trade him because otherwise he is his value is going to go down every year. That's pretty much how it works anyway, but he's, you know, he's, he's awesome. He's just dangerous you know yeah. and and you don't have any room for that you need to minimize you're you gotta you gotta do something with this that's why you sent the team in that we're trying to come up with some ideas here and it's yeah it's selling debo for as much as you can get without letting too much to you know you can you, you can he can't be on your team at the end of next year you know right you, you can't go another season with debo on this team you're 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 really that's just take that's too much gamble you gotta take some gamble off the table yeah, so I mean, Debo is the first thing, and then you know, I real I want to touch on these picks real quick, and then we'll get back to the assets that you have, and maybe kind of what you need because it's basically an all hands on liquidation. This is because this can, is a full remodel. I don't know who yeah. you had before. Maybe you maybe when you traded for one nine and one twelve, you were hoping they'd be earlier picks, right? Um, but good, you know, but if you want to make that one three, you can make that one three. Don't trade it probably back out of through that tier break of the one seven. Get one of those guys well, on top your team. six. It's, PP, it's, it's half PPR. So it's, it's half PPR. So, I mean, I guess you could take Bowers out of the equation here if you wanted to. Maybe um, Bowers is the best thing to ever hit NFL. So maybe you don't want to throw him out of the equation, right. but just, you know. But then the one nine and the one twelve, those things are going as far back as it takes for me to get some first for next year. Mm hmm right absolutely you know and what what else uh, obviously i'm adding things uh, along the way but like how far back how far back do i have to take that pick mm -hmm. to, to get a first round for 25 because i need to start getting those back i'm hoping that actually that maybe i can find the guy at one six or one seven and give him nine so his seven goes to nine and i give him 12 as well and you give me your first next year so i move up two spots give you the 12 next year because some a lot of people will give their 112 for a random first next year if they're in the right spot or it's the right draft class or whatever the right settings for the team the person just to say hey i'm gonna throw this back and obviously maybe it's a little better next year. hopefully you're not looking for most of the time it's not the most completely random trade you're mm -hmm. targeting the bad teams like that i play in in two of my ffpc leagues one of them you're in it one of them you're not the consistently top two teams and these both of these leagues have been going on for more than five years and but in, in both of them there's a good team that's not ours and one guy in the league that we play in is always making smart trades like that he's got a back into the first round pick and he's always trading it to a bad team and coming up next year and now he's got the one three instead mm -hmm. And that's like free value. You had to wait a year, but he jumped up. And then one of my leagues, there's got always this guy that's trading his 110, 111, 112. And if, you know, for a, picking on the, the bad team mm -hmm. or the new, t the, the orphan guy, the, orf the guy that shows up that took over the bad team and he's wanting to have a rookie pick this year or another rookie pick this year. And he gives up because he might not have done it enough times to understand what he gave up next year, you know. Um, so maybe you can go nine to seven and get in that tier and maybe it's not, maybe you can't, but it's just an idea. Maybe you can go, but I'm, I'm but completely you go to six. Maybe you can go not from nine up to seven or six and it maybe you, you know, maybe you can't find that trade, but it's definitely worth exploring. And you, you know, you trade, you send it to six first, then you send it to seven. Cause maybe, maybe even, even being half PPR, somebody still might take Bowers over, Jaden Daniels, you know, um, well, it's super flex. So I don't think so. That's I mean, I'm still, yeah. Bowers is a cult hero. Sure. I guess so, maybe, you know, but I don't, I don't think so, but well, um, but it's it, possible. So, and so if you can't get the trade up done again, you know, in the last video, if you, you 
don't want to be on the clock if you only have you know freaking 30 minutes to pick i'm not gonna repeat everything i said in the last video go back and go check that out but if you know if you can't get the trade up you can't go from nine to six or seven and trade back off the 12 then you get to the nine and like casey said you're basically doing everything possible to get more picks next year and the and the key to it's like all right well you know well one and nine could be a stud sure he could be but the the thing is is maybe you go back to maybe one nine goes to two one you don't know you know right you don't well, you start at two one and then you just start working back you know and i'm not saying that you go from one nine or two one and somebody gives you a first round pick but maybe you go maybe you know maybe you go from one nine to two one and 112 to two maybe the same guy has two picks and you move bump bump both of them up and it kind of looks weird on paper but it worked out where both of his picks moved up and you went from maybe your one nine and 112 becomes two one and two five and you got a first next year and a player mm-hmm. or something like that um you know so now you still got you know because it you could easily take somebody at two one that's just as good or better than a one nine pick you know you can you can just go back and look at all of the rookie drafts in the history of mm-hmm. fantasy football dynasty fantasy football and you can find all the hits and the misses and they're all jumbled up mm-hmm. you know if we knew justin jefferson was going to be that good he wouldn't have gone at average one seven to one eight to one nine right right it, and i'm assuming as maybe the one three is yours but you know i'm assuming you don't you didn't list what pick with the second and the third and the fourth so you you have a second to play with in there as well oh good point yeah there's no uh, yeah who knows what picks are if those are if he has any of those are his but like, bro, I'm, I'm moving back to the second, and then I'm moving back to the third and fourth. I'll take a bunch of shots in the third and the fourth and just gain stuff for next year. Mm-hmm. And hopefully we hit on those ones that hit one of the two of the hopefully four or five picks you had in the three or the four, and all of a sudden we're like, all right, bang, that's exactly what we wanted to do. Yeah, um, yeah, good point. Um, yeah, you know, and, and and maybe your trade back doesn't have to do with both the 1-9 and the 112 at the same time. There's nothing, right. you know, hey, you take the 1-9, and if you – can't get the right trade if somebody doesn't hey I mean, there's no chance you're getting my first round pick do you want to trade or not and they say he's got the two one you go from one nine or two, two one two, and you give him your third you, you get something. you know and you and you get something good but if it's not his first round pick well you know get a good player but it better not be amari cooper right you know Mark cooper's be a, a young, young Mark cooper's player. a fantastic player right. but he does you no good on this team right you're not bringing in any veteran players on purpose unless he's part of a throw-in that you just say okay i'm trading him again later right that's a i'll but, take him but he but he cannot be the reason. putting no value on him I'll exactly take him. exactly you know if you if you go from one nine to two one or two three or whatever that pick is and you get a a really good prospect or i mean that's a big drop so you should be getting a startable player but it just can't be an eight you know a, even you can't be like a 26 27 year old wide receiver that it has to be somebody good if um, it is a 26 or 27 year old receiver, like I know I'm a big Hollywood Brown, but that I would want somebody that is 26, 27 has been up high in the rankings and is just down a little bit right now. So like a Hollywood Brown, if I'm making that trade and that's the player that I can get, I think I'm okay with that. Sometimes if it's a player who I think's value can bounce back and I can be like, all right, bang, I can, I can see I can, that. Now I can sell that. If, if that's the deal that I have to make, yeah, I would. Much, uh, all right, so I don't want to do that. I'd that's not really rather, what I want to do. But if I am, yeah, I'll, I'll shoot for somebody who I who has or keep at either a keep adding on or either the if the Hollywood Brown guy that type of example either a in the perfect world that guy is the one eleven and he wants to give you one he wants to give you Hollywood Brown to move up two spots so you don't move back because the the farther the the slower you can do the move back the more you can get. Mm-hmm. You know, if you just drop from one nine to two four, you'd skip two or three trade backs. For it. And if you get something good, it's worth it. If not, you need to be stacking up second round picks for next year kind of thing. You know, and if the guy at two two, it wants to give you Hollywood Brown to move up to one nine. You're like, no way, man. And there's nothing else you can do. Then you'd be like, all right, I'll give you I'll give you the one twelve. I'll move back from one twelve to two two for Hollywood. But if he's not getting me up to one nine right. from two four or right. whatever. Right. You know, you're just playing those games with your trade partners and just drawing lines in the sand somewhere. But at the same time, you know, you basically you got to make the most out of these picks. But these are very similar picks to the picks that me and Casey had last year in a in a FFPC league, like one three, one nine, one twelve. Not even superflex. It wasn't even superflex, and we got a haul for rookie fever. So you're gonna, you know, like say, sit, you know, make one three. But exactly the same. I mean, if you're if you're on the clock at one three, yeah, I don't have to make that if I it, don't want to. It, you should be trying unless you're. You, you don't have enough to work with to be like stuck on one three, mm-hmm. you know? So you're one of the best ways to kickstart this team is to be like one three, you trade back to one six. And I'm not saying 
I'm just, these are numb, you know, if it's one, three to one, five, the right trade partner. But if like, if, if Marvin Harrison jr is on the pay on the, on the board at one, three, just using that example or whatever, maybe he's on, maybe he's gone already. Let's just take that name out. Cause everybody, you know, Roma Dunze. maybe he's gone. Um, but like, well, it's super flex. So it would be, you know, you'd be one of the quarterbacks. Well, one of them and Marvin's gone. Right. You know, obviously it's, you're just assuming Caleb right. and Marvin, but you right. got neighbors May, and Drake neighbors. May and yeah, you're getting and, a great pick there. Yeah, exactly. If you want to make it, I'm not going to begrudge you. Nobody's going to certainly be upset. just an get, idea, right. just an idea to say, okay, I'm, I can go back from three to five or six and five, you know, five, you, if you're okay with, if you're like, Hey, I, I want Brock Bowers cause he's fun and I'm, this is going to be fun for me and I want Brock Bowers. Okay. Well, great. You could probably go back to six. And if you, if you miss him, then you just got Jaden Daniels or, or right. Drake may. Right. Right. So you, if you get sniped for your guy, you just got a quarterback, which is what you need more of anybody. You need a quarterback more than you need anything. So if you, if, you know, you, you could probably get a haul for, to go from three to six. And maybe it's, if you think for some reason you, you know, you're reading the tea leaves, you know, your league, you're like, all right, well, I don't know if in a half PPR, it brought back, I need a quarterback. Then maybe you don't want to, you know, if Brock Bowers is going to be one six and you're pretty sure it is, and you can kind of put those pieces together, then you're trying to make that trade with one five. So you can get Daniels or Drake may or what have you. Um, that that's a really good way. It takes, it's, it'll sting, man. Nobody wants to get off a of one three. I'm certainly not saying do it today, Mm -hmm. you know, just let this thing percolate a little bit, but you know, nobody wants to not draft neighbors or Marvin Harrison or even, you know, potentially grant. I don't know a ton about Drake may other than he's supposed to be awesome, but you know, in a super flex league, you got to take a shot at a quarterback when you get a chance, but he's, it's a quarterback. So is it, at a minimum 50 50 chances a bust mm. right so there's your that's that's the problem like you said i love what you said in the last video like neighbors is the most guaranteed not bust because of the nature of the wide the quarterback position mm-hmm. you know Jaden daniels he could be amazing but he also runs around like he's you know weighs more than he does yeah right you see the um, you know you sure. see the highlights and he gets popped and mm-hmm. flies back five yards like it you know maybe he's amazing and fantastic and plays for 12 years and everything's great maybe he gets folded up and he's not you know it's i hope that doesn't happen but there's more gamble there Mm -hmm. um so maybe neighbors is a good pick at three or you trade back and then maybe two quarterbacks go and you still get you know it's just you need a lot of work on this team if you if you could formulate a trade back from three to five or six you're going to be able to get something really good and help your team so you're still drafting something really good right so most likely trying to slow trade backs little little as you can at a time to just push stuff down the line um and if you got to add some some of your ancillary pieces here as uh, on picks as well you know like um you know keaton mitchell in a in a move back probably could help you you know there's you got some players on your team that can help you moving around i think too um whether it's wanting to move up like it's Hey, maybe the trade backs aren't working. Maybe I'm going to, maybe I was like, fuck it. Well, how can I go from one nine to one four? Uh, For sure. And I get, you know, if it, sometimes it's not working and it's like, well, this is what I want to do, but it's not working. Mm-hmm. Maybe everyone's, everyone's trying to sell their picks. I don't, you know, I don't know why, but okay. all right, well now, I'm, now, all right, well, I'll give you one nine and I'll give you uh, Keaton Mitchell, who was hot. I'll give you, you know, I'll give you Will Levis and, you know, maybe you give him, maybe you give Debo a one twelve and go as high as you can get. Right. You, you know, know, so d- options most mm-hmm. i want to go backwards and acquire picks for down the road and younger assets uh but if sometimes it, sometimes you can great gain equity by going up because it just goes that way sometimes mm-hmm. I've been around enough you see it i like it. um so all right so that's kind of the pick side of things exhausting that on the other side of assets thing you know what stands out is debo uh you know Jaden reed drake london um hollywood is probably too down to sell right now that'd be maybe to help you move something if you wanted to what 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 you you gave david montgomery and what for a first round pick this year or didn't you you sold david montgomery i for, bought david montgomery oh one of our listeners that um gave away we did a roster review the one of the first ones we did and then he the next couple of days later he traded david montgomery and somebody and got a first round pick next year i, I forget what i got a first round pick and something so I mean, to me, I David I, I Montgomery. I traded James Cook and got a first round did. pick and David Montgomery. You did, you did. In the beginning of the season, mm-hmm. before James, before they took off, yeah. yeah. So I would be, I would be trying to, 
to me, like Dave Montgomery's glowing red. Um, Roshan, super young. Kendra Miller, super young. Not hurt cheap. But Keaton Mitchell is a throw in on a trade to get something done. It's a really good idea. Um, but also, but you don't you know, have to. But exactly. I was just about to say, but also letting he, him he come could back. Blow, he could blow up. And he, I think Kendra Miller could blow up for you, too. I, I loved what I saw at the end of the year. You got three guys there and, and Mitchell, Miller, and Roshan. Young, good. You don't have to do anything. People might be interested in those. And yeah, you can I would, catch the right guy. I, I wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't trade Kendra Miller unless it was a, you were finding a Casey Myers who would give you the proper value. Right. You know, I think you're spinning your wheels and throwing away. I'm not taking a loss on Kendra. He's just getting exactly. whatever I paid for him last year is, is at minimum what I want. And you're not going to get that. Right. So you don't trade him unless he's like the name that makes the big trade go through for right. you and the big trade back that gets you something, you know, some monster deal. And Kendra's the one guy that's like, all right, well, that's a scale tipper. That's fine. But like, don't just throw Kendra in a deal because, you know, you yeah, just what, be giving up. What can I trade David Montgomery and Debo Samuel for? Is that basically what I'm right? You know, putting those guys together. Who, You're going what, what looking. Can I, what can I go get for that? Unfortunately, there's there's the the rub. There is the people that are going to want him are going to be the good teams mm-hmm. with the bad draft picks. Mm-hmm. So what you got to do is try to find the worst draft pick that you can find for or, the, to give that to, or you find the good team. That's willing to give up something young for that starting for you those find veterans. the good teams who's on the about to be on the cliff or you think is about to be on the cliff. And that's the one that you go get the 25 from love it or the 26 from rather mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. you think you, yeah, it's like, all right, this guy thinks he's good. He's been good, but you can see that there is not a whole lot of depth here. These guys are getting older. He gets an injury or two. Mm-hmm. He's in trouble. Mm-hmm. Go push instead of trying for the twenty five. Go for the twenty six on that team. And you can get way more good. because nobody right. cares that you're not just being like, all right, well, I got a fur. You know, I wouldn't. I don't think I would give you uh, Debo and David Montgomery for a twenty six first. But it's not the worst idea if the team is full of Keenan Allen's and. And it's not the worst idea if you're trying to win, you know, and you got, you got a really good team. Like those two guys are going to. I'm score saying points. for the guy. I'm saying for Clyde Frog here, giving away Debo and David Montgomery to get a 26 first, right, right, by right, right, itself. Right, I would be right. wanting more, One more. Gotcha. Give me, you know, give me yeah. the 26 first. Give me your Josh Downs. Give me this guy. Give me this guy. Right. You know, should be able to collect a nice little haul because you didn't even ask for a 25 first. Obviously, I would be looking for. A, I mean, we're talking about 24 draft picks, so 25. 26 gives that team time to just bail out, Mm -hmm. you know, like what Casey's saying, you know, you got your team full of Mike Evans and Keenan Allen and Cooper cups. Sure. I'm going to look for, I'm going to take your 26 first and be happy about it. The one thing that I have learned though, that I learned in a, in two, uh, startups this year where I was getting people's first round picks next year in the startup, even knowing they were, you know, seeing, Hey, they're getting good or whatever. I got a 25 first from some guys. It's like, well, not only did they empty the clip, this was last, you know, coming into this year, so they were emptying the 24, for 24 clip. Like, they emptied the 25 clip, they emptied the 26 clip. So, like, mm-hmm. that's the kind of part that sucks about that is, like, you get a team that's decent, you get draft picks from a team that's kind of good, and they've already sold the future. They'll continue to sell it in advance. And even if they're not getting proper return on that equity, as long as if they just get a couple players that hit – now your draft picks stay not great. Right. You know? Um, so I just, and I've saw that literally happen this year. It's like, all right, well that was aggravating because there's nothing I can do. I got this dude's first round pick, but he's went and he's gone two more years down the line right. to buy a team that makes my draft pick that I have of his <laughs> right, not right. good. You know? Spike so, trades. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's probably, I mean, he's still, he's trying to win. Right. Right. And I don't, I don't, I don't, everybody's, that's his way of skinning the cat. He's like, I'm going to give it away. Everybody's draft, pick, every draft pick I can come up with. But, you know, a team that should have fell off just got replenished right. because he gave away. Got himself you know, two more years. A whole nother, he gave sure. away a whole nother draft class. Doesn't even have anything for 26 anymore. Yeah. It's like, man, what is going on? Yeah, no, I I, I agree. Just so a little you know, caution flag there. Those are kind of a lot of the assets. I mean, you can hang on to Drake London and Jaden Reed if you want. I'm not opposed to moving either one of those guys either on just kind of where we're at with this team. If we're trying to go like full on tear down rebuild, you basically don't really want too many running backs those three that we listed off Roshan Johnson Kendra Miller you know even Evan Hall and 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 Keaton Mitchell like those I'm fine with those guys staying around uh but you know we got to figure out what you're going to do with David Montgomery the rest of those guys what the fuck ever um and then Will Levis is really your last question mark piece 
can you get some value for Will Levis or does it better serve you to roll the dice and see what happens going into next year? Because we kind of touched on this a little bit and it's come in the last episode. I don't even know if one of them's out yet. I think I've talked about it two separate times. Will Levis is going to get a good opportunity from a guy who's gr- groomed a bunch of, or at least not, not necessarily groom, but been around and coached up a lot of really good quarterbacks. Good names. So Will, High in pieces. Will Levis is in a good potential position here mm-hmm. with, you know, we, we saw that there's tools there um, to, to do stuff. Will, will he be the guy? I don't know. I would err on the side of caution. If I could get something decent for him, I probably would. Mm-hmm. Uh, or, you know, probably going to be more of a combo piece than, uh, you know, than, than an one single, I'm going to go attach Will Levis and find myself a first round pick. Probably ain't happening. Right. Uh, but, you know, like I said, he, real quick, the Brian Callahan has been with, you know, uh, Peyton Manning in 2015 when he won the Super Bowl. He was with uh, Stafford in Detroit. He's with Derek Carr in, and John Gruden in for the uh, Raiders. For the Raiders, where, you know, Carr had a, over 4,000 yard yeah. season. Uh, been with uh, Joe Burrow and, and, you know, helped bring him along and develop him. And then, you know, you saw Drake Browning come in this year and, you know, under, you know, some guidance and some sure. help from him as, good. you know, just, just good has, has had some, uh, you know, good quarterbacks to be around and, and, you know, so that buzz is going to be building for Levis. Here's, maybe I hadn't heard anybody really talk about it. It's just like, fresh. It's right. real fresh. And we got a lot more to talk about important things than Will Levis right now in the football industry. Let's sure, just be honest. Sure. But so here's why I would probably look to play that. I would be looking to try to hang on to Levis until at least preseason training camp. He's like his, he's big. He's huge. He's got muscles. He's fast. Like he's, and he throws the ball at 90 yards, like, and, and give it time for what Casey just said to develop through the community, the football community. So that talking heads can talk about it in Tennessee and their coach and this and their offense. And you got to get it. You got to let it all come down the line so everybody can pump up the potential of Levis in the new age offense of the Titans. That being said, you gamble when you trade away a quarterback like this, who's been, you know, one league and had flash. when, when he came back against Miami on that Monday night, dude, he looked fantastic. Mm -hmm. But then the next week he looked horrible yeah. or, you know, maybe not the next, maybe, you right. know, within two, it, it just up and down, he looks benchable. He's like right. a rookie. looks like a rookie. Well, sure. With a bad well, offensive line. Imagine right. That. And, and right. So with the high end Monday night Island game viewers, you know, like with the high end play that he, you know, he, he showed you enough to be like, dude, this can, he can do it. Will he do it consistently and keep a starting job in the NFL? Who knows? So, there is gambling on both directions. So with a team, you know, that needs this much work, you might get into next year preseason. Will Levis looking good against somebody's backups. We see it every year. Mm -hmm. How how good did Malik Willis look in the preseason? And then, you know, Kenny P, you know, like exactly. Yeah. Kenny P looked at the Steelers. I I have, you know, I, I, do this gambling contest. And one of the t- things I want to do is bet on teams that played their starters in the preseason, the first couple weeks of the season, cause they're ready to go. Mm. The Steelers are somebody I, I picked the Steelers for two or three weeks in the season, just cause they were already ready to roll. Well, if Levis looks like he's rolling in the preseason week one and two next year, you a are gambling. If you trade him away, cause he might be the truth or B you might be gambling. If you don't trade him away, cause what he might turn, he might go to zero right. because a lot of quarterbacks, do. right? Um, so in this team, you know, I might say, let me let this hype train build and then trade Will Levis before he has a chance to go down. Mm -hmm. And you know, you've made a strategic decision that you should say, Hey, I'm going to live with this and not really, uh, yeah, there's always regret, but like, you know, Hey, this was the decision I made. I'm trading Will Levis in this pocket of time that I can see coming. I'm going to let it build. I'm going to have it strike. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And if he blows up. I know that I step, I, I, I did it for a reason, you know, and it may, you know, I'm just, this is, this is kind of how, well, this is what I would be thinking about from the guy who said that I, you know, I can sit here and say that I told you last year to get anything you can get for Ritter. And I also told you last year we did the mock draft thing and we counted it up and we we're, and I was like, dude, you got to go buy, um, Mac Jones right now, mm-hmm. you know? So like a hundred percent devs and Ritter is not a starter in this league. And I told you to sell him for anything. And I also said, dude, go get Mac Jones because here's, he's going to be very valuable in Superflex because there's not, we've, 
we've gone through all the quarterbacks and we're still missing five starters. You know right. that, you know, we, we counted up 27 quarterbacks that we liked and we need 32 every week. Right. Mac Jones, whatever reason, what, you know, that didn't work out. So I'm not, you know, I've just as I've instead of patting myself on the back, I want to show you good and bad of what mm-hmm. I was talking about yeah. last year. Will Levis. Oh, Easily Loved could be scooping Mac Jones. Still not necessarily out on Mac Jones. I will take Mac Jones right now at zero. Yeah, like he's basically get, yeah, gone to zero. Free, right. you know, the, no, he's gone to zero. And that's what you don't want to have Will Levis do on this team. Right. That's you just can't have that on this team. And if he blows up and you traded him, it's like, ah, but I'm sure he, if he blows up, like you don't even have enough team here for that really to match. It's gonna it's gonna hurt, but like I mean we he's not I don't want to talk in absolutes. He's not going to become Patrick Mahomes. It's well, not Jordan, Jordan of, Love would probably be a better. He's not going to become Jordan Love necessarily because that was really that was the Will Levis of going into this year. Mm-hmm. And we, we've seen a little Will Levis, at least, you know, but Will Levis has a little bit of hope right now. Sure. Love had a little bit of hope right now. Some people were in, some people were out. Oh, that's a great point. It's um, a great example. And I would say that like that Jordan Love never looked before this year as good as Will Levis did against the Miami Dolphins those last two drives on a Monday night. <laughs> Cause I I'm tell I had I I was pulling for the Titans and the way I mean it just it was incredible. There uh, the ball bounces in funny ways, but like DeAndre Hopkins was like the perfect wide receiver for him. And even towards the end of the year, he's he snapped it. He snapped back at Hopkins on the sidelines, which I wanted to see out of my young quarterback. And I would imagine that some guys had to respect. I don't know what he said, but the fact that he stood up for himself when Hopkins was talking about, you know, hey, you didn't throw me the ball or something. And, you know, there's a lot that you can grab onto if you want to be a Will Levis fan. And you were like, hey, I got this guy. If you if this was a good team, dude, you don't trade Will Levis no. because of what could be. Sure. You know, I'm. I'm buying Will Levis on the cheap on teams that can handle that gamble. Mm-hmm. But on this team, it's the opposite. Mm-hmm. You can't handle, you can't handle the downside. Yeah. You don't hold that much to, you know, you don't have much to hold at all. So what you, you got to get rid of the game. And I, you need to be trading Kyler Murray when he's blowing up. Didn't get that far yet. Kyler Murray is, you know, maybe this is all some pro Kyler Murray tweets this last couple of weeks. So it might be, he just needs a minute to analyze when what happened. Up. Well, just the, I don't think you know, I think he basically averaged 18 points per game. That's coming, what I'm coming saying. back here in this in that run that he came through mm-hmm. with with nothing. So it's like I feel like at least that's like starting to mm-hmm. be like, oh, well, my, you know, 18, right 18 points isn't necessarily the best thing you've ever seen. But like we're coming back from an injury on a terrible team. Like before that, I think it was, you know, he was a 21, 22 point a game dude average kind of guy i don't have the number in front of me you yeah a you, big bu- big buying into kyler murray but just like you said on this team like i'm buying kyler everywhere i can if if i could still get the discount i was we told you all last season by kyler murray uh, this is a team where you know you probably want to want to want to move off because a well not right but when he blows up i'm right. not trying i don't i'm not in a hurry i'm not right. nearly you gotta get it's not will value. levis it's not will levis let him let him First of all, that that coach it's actually not fifty had, fifty with, had, with Kyler. The Cardinals play way better and harder than this year than mm-hmm. anybody expected. Well, um, so like I that the whole organization's following that coach's lead, which did not look good in the first little zoomed in team rah rah speech he tried to give. It was horrible. I thought the whole team was going to crumble. I bet the I bet the under only wins total. Yeah, well, you know, all that that stuff's just so still like hit it, but they played good. Right, um, they played hard, and James Conner, that you know, they played hard. I, but I I'm selling Jay, I'm selling Kyler Murray off of this team for a you know a 230 pound quarterback that doesn't run all the time. You know, uh, and when he's blowing up, I'm trying to trade him. You know, a, even if it's to a trade when Kyler Murray's blowing up, but give me Jordan Love and something else. Mm. You know. Um, give me Jordan Love plus. To, right now, you might the Jordan Love guy might say, I need something extra to get to Kyler. But when Kyler gets back out there a full year, you know, like you said, he's coming back off of a blown knee. They're going to regroup, retool. They got an up. They could easily be throwing to Marvin Harrison Jr. Oh, yeah. I think he's you know? most likely going to be. Exactly. So, like, he, he, he could be another wide receiver. And, and, and then you got the – what's the tight end's name? McBride. Then, then you got McBride coming in with the most – with 
not only I'm sure he had the confidence, but now the organization's like, dang, he really did what we thought he could do. Oh, yeah. So now you got a stud in McBride, and you got Marquise Brown on the low low. Well, he's on um, the contract, so he might not be back. But you know, the, right, if so he's he, not there, the, which – Marvin Harrison Jr. may be coming in the door. Right, you get, that, you're you gonna, probably going to get a wide receiver, and then you're going to add one additional if you don't at least keep Hollywood Brown, which – Mm-hmm. would make sense to keep him but uh, you know it is what it is and you got wilson in the wings who you know was decent at times as a rookie um you still have the you still have rondell moore who i think can can give you a little something here and there and if, if they were a complete team but the, you know mu- much better situation moving forward it would seem for for the cardinals so on this team before we go you got to sit here and let michael mayer develop you're not mm-hmm. going to get enough for him i wouldn't trade away the mayor mayor i'd nope. let him develop and then I would be pushing Montgomery out the door. Um, I don't mind hanging on or trading to Jaden Reed. I could trade Jaden Reed to the right guy who's a Jaden right. Reed absolute lover. I could trade lover. Reed and London to the right guys, but I don't, find I'm not the, dying to. But Yeah, I, I, there's so many, like you said, I mean, the manufacturer touch, touches for Reed, but there's so many mouths to feed in um, you know, Green Bay. Right. I, would, I don't mind Jaden Reed being part of a deal. Um, D- Demario Douglas is going to be a good cooker in a trade for s- s- somebody some might have guys. yes for some somebody have some love for him. I would be looking to find the right spot for if to move Drake. Basically, your whole team needs to go for plus plus. You know, like you need you just turn it over again, man. Go, um, you know, take some of this advice. Any of it, you know, some of it was probably good. Some of it was probably bad. It's gonna, you know, you're <laughs> not. It's not always gonna be perfect. But um, this is one Clyde Frog that I would love to see what you look like next year or maybe even you know a couple moves couple, down the line. couple moves down the line show us what you're working with it's gonna bro. be a couple versions of this team yeah that you got to figure you know, out it's you know drake london find the right guy that loves him now and take a chance you know or if if the if the falcons don't come up with a quarterback solution this year he's super young you just got to ride mm. you know you got to keep him until it's the right time to strike because he's a stud and all he needs is more targets. And if he finds a quarterback, then he'll be a stud. And if he doesn't, then you got to ride that out. Yeah. If if you find the right, if you find the right lover, I just don't think you're going to get enough for Drake London right now of what he can be and what he will be. Yeah. The very, for London, at least there's enough people who have him, me included, have him high enough in the rankings that people who are, Maybe, you know, the I think your home league guys probably aren't high on London, but there's enough exactly. industry guys who are right. keeping London's hope, and me included. That's what I mean. Alive, if you, that if you can get the right person who is in the connected into the uh, matrix of fantasy mm-hmm. and up to looking at all everybody's stuff and, and lives and dies off of the, the big fantasy. The guys that are telling ride, you right now. You buy to buy. You need to buy. You need to buy Drake London right now before he blows up, right. kind of thing. Like those guys are. If you if you got a guy or two in your league, they're listening to people that say Drake London's about to explode. Or it's all there for him to explode. Right. If it worked out, then you know you might get the right value. But I, in your home league, they don't care that Raheem Morris just went over there, and there could be a chance that that he's bringing over their uh, Zach. Uh, drawing a blank on who McVay. No, but the, you brought Zach uh, Robinson, maybe. I think that's his name. That's his going to be the OC, but he was under McVay. But what, over he's there. bringing one of coach, boys. wide receiver coach. Been in that system for a while. They're not going to, the home league guys aren't going to be up on, hey, this all of a sudden went from, might, might be a three wide receiver. This guy could be your guy mm-hmm. who's just dominating touches. All of a sudden, we went from a, you know, a funky Arthur Smith offense that was everybody was a little upset on how it went. Like you said, you do need a quarterback to facilitate, but I think they know that they're going to be going through free agency or the draft here to try to figure it out. Could have Justin Fields. They could have Justin Fields, which could have Kirk Cousins. You know, C- Cousins makes some sense. Um, there's there's some other guys around that 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 could make some sense for there. Um, so, yeah. All right, you got anything else? Because we need to get out of here. No, I'm good. All right. Well, we appreciate you guys. Keep the roster reviews coming. You can find us on the uh, Patreons at the FFD. We got five dollar holler. Get you on the Discord. We got all sorts of stuff going on there. We got ADP uh, that we'll be rolling out. We got slow mocks. We got fast mocks live. Uh, we're going to be going live most Sundays. Not every Sunday, but that's why you got to like, subscribe, uh, comment below. And if you're following along, we'll be telling you which days we're going to be going live. We'll be doing live mocks, rookies, all that stuff. But it's also a good way to kind of get in there and you can ask trade questions as we're going. It's not just to do the mock. The mock's a medium to have <laughs> conversations, um, right. you know, as well as figure out where guys are going. They can plug that into our ADP as well. But all sorts of good stuff going on over there. Like, subscribe, five-star review on the podcast, all that jazz. Um, 
appreciate you and we will catch you next time peace <laughs>